guys, Loot Wizard here with another video on Gems of War, and in this one I want to go over the new uh, faction event here this week, the Hall of Guardians. And uh, if you haven't seen my delve farming video uh, that I released about a week ago, go and check that out. Uh, but in this video, I actually want to correct one thing that I did s mention in that previous video, was that when you're delve farming, I said that you want to always skip the uh, a faction event for the delve that you want to keep at level 20. And that isn't entirely accurate. I have discovered here that if you uh, fight all the way, all the battles, all the way up to the boss room, and then you simply run away without fighting uh, the boss room, then that uh, delve faction will stay at level 20. So you can do the the faction event for the one that you are farming that you want to keep at level 20 just never never fight and defeat the boss room and uh, you'll still get some good rewards if you have your faction quality up to 10 uh, even if you run away so you can do that and that'll allow you to to get some of the rewards in here you won't be able to get some of the higher rewards if you run away from every boss room but at least uh, you will still be able to get some of these rewards even on the one that you're farming uh, so and In this video as well. I just started doing uh, some of these uh, battles here, so I uh, Just wanted to kind of show you a little bit too the team that I'm using for the Hall of Guardians event here so I'm using at the top the new troop from the new faction that came out Fang Moore. Uh, which is the chief Dargon and He gives attack to himself and to all allies below him and then he explodes a row So he's a mana generator plus a tank in that regard. He does once you have him traded He reduces damage from skulls by 50% And then he also inflicts bleed on a random enemy on red gem matches which bleed uh, deals true damage at the beginning of each turn uh, and it can stack up to four times. So that's a little extra true damage. It's kind of like burning, except burning just removes uh, like three armor. And then if, there, if there's only health left, then burning starts eating health. So bleed is like, it, it skips the armor and goes straight to the health and starts eating away at that. Um, second place, I have the Hall of Guardians faction troop, the Gargoyle which does splash damage to an enemy boosted by all allies attack, and then it explodes two gems. Um, this one can also act as a tank, uh, reduces damage from spells and skulls, which I haven't taken the time to trait this one yet, but uh, this is can also act as a tank. In third spot, I have Luna, which is another uh, faction troop from the Warrens, uh, which is a great uh, troop overall. Uh, does damage to all enemies, then inflicts either status effects on the enemies or grants allies status effects. Uh, explodes random gem when matching yellow gems if that is traded. In the last spot, I do have the Dawnbringer, which does damage to all enemies, and then it gives all my allies barrier. Um, I am using the um, Bard hero class that gives all yellow allies one stat at the start of each turn, which will... Uh, affect the uh, Chief Dargon here. It'll give him more attack that he can give to everybody else every single turn. So that's just, it's not much, but it's a little bit of boost. Uh, once I get in the higher levels of the uh, the Delve here, that should uh, probably really help me out in the longer battles. But um, this is really good combination here because this guy gives attack to all allies. So um, if it gives 24 attack to each ally, you're looking at like it's close to an, another 100 attack or just from one cast that it's going to give everybody. Now, the real damage dealer is here, the Gargoyle, because it's going to do splash damage boosted by all allies attack, um, which is a boost ratio of 3 and 1, so it's about a third of all the attack gets done as damage. So if 100 attack is being added every time this guy casts, uh, we're looking at uh, about another 30 or so damage that the gargoyle is going to do to the enemies uh, when he every time he casts there. So uh, currently, all the enemy health, or I mean at health, but attack is about 200. So if I cast him right now, uh, it would be a third of that 200, which would be like 60 damage added to the 26. So we're looking at like 80 to 90 damage right now. 
uh, if I cast them, then it'll get splashed around. Um, and that'll just continue to increase the more that we cast that first guy. So let's just start going here and see how it works. It's been working pretty good for me so far, but again, these the the, uh, the enemy is still really low level. So go ahead and cast this. Splash damage, kills a bunch of those guys. Go ahead and uh, explode a row. And as you can see, that added attack to a bunch of them. This is going to be easy, though, because these guys are so low level right now. And, of course, I have Dawnbringer in the last spot, but um, if you have not taken the time to farm the souls for Dawnbringer, that's fine. You can use a different hero weapon in that last slot that does damage to all enemies or buffs your, your allies, anything like that. Um, as for the banner, I think I chose the Guardian's banner, which gives a double boost to red and one boost to brown, I believe. Because I want the double red for the uh, guy here at the top, and then I want uh, brown for the gargoyle. Let's go ahead and explode a row here, give some uh, mana to everybody. Use my Dawnbringer to wipe them all out. So these battles are going to go by pretty quick because these enemies are still really low level. It started me out at the level 20. And also, if you do have the uh, Bard hero class here leveled up, uh, I, mine is currently at 100, but if you do have it leveled up to level 70, you're going to get the uh, option to have this talent, Tree of Knowledge, which gains enchant when matching green gems. So that, that really does help because you can simply just connect a green and then uh, your hero class will start to, it'll be enchanted and it'll start to gain 2 mana every single turn. And at this point in the game, I mean, I'm pretty much... Well, I, either Gargoyle, Luna, or my Dawnbringer, once I get one of those up, it's pretty much game over. Now, for the, this is the first battle I'm doing here in the event, so I will, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you that it will remain at level 20 if I don't do the boss room. So after I defeat this room here, I'm just going to run away, and then you can see that it will stay at level 20. Now you can really do this for two reasons. One would be that you're farming this current faction and you want it to stay at level 20. Uh, the other reason would be that you you want to just simply uh, uh, kind of farm the faction event, I guess. Um, instead of completing the boss room every time and it's going to get more and more difficult every time, the level is going to go from 20, 30, 40. And it's going to continue to go up and get more and more difficult for you to uh, defeat the enemies. So if you did want to simply just farm them really easily without uh, having the enemies get more difficult, once you get this far in the delve, uh, you just skip the boss room, just run away. And you still get some rewards. They won't be, the chest won't be as high a level as if you defeated the boss room. But you will still get some uh, some decent rewards, especially if you have that quality level up to 10, which I do for this faction. So, as you can see here, I got uh, 8 legendary ingots, I got 146 glory, and for the gold, I got 29,000, which isn't bad for a level 3 chest. Just running away from the boss room, that's pretty good. Um, so, as you can see here, it started over, and it still says level 20. So, yeah, uh, that that's a way that you can farm these faction events without increasing the level. And, uh, 
So I hope, hope that helps you out, guys. Thanks for watching. Later.